Hello everyone, so today we're gonna look at a problem from limits. The question is, limit n is tending towards infinity, summation k is varying from 0 to n, n c k whole divided by n raised to power k multiplied by k plus 3. So let's start. Now our question is, limit n is tending towards infinity, summation k is varying from 0 to n, n c k whole divided by n raised to power k multiplied by k plus 3. Now the first thing I observe here is to evaluate the limit I'll be needing the value of the sum that is summation k is varying from 0 to n n c k whole divided by n raised to power k multiplied by k plus 3. Now to evaluate the sum I'll be putting the value k is equal to 0 and I'll be writing the term plus k is equal to 1 plus k is equal to 2 so on up to n and we'll be getting n plus 1 terms. Now it is very difficult to evaluate the limit because we'll be getting n plus 1 terms. Rather than this I'll do one thing I try to convert this expression into a perfect expansion. Once I get the perfect expansion then it will be very easy to evaluate the limit because n c k and n raised to power k are present that is the hint to convert this into a perfect expansion. Now the catch of the problem is here I'll write 1 upon k plus 3 as I can write this as integration 0 to 1 x raised to power k plus 2 d of x. Now we'll check the value of 1 upon k plus 3 is can be equal to this integration so let's evaluate this integration that is x raised to power k plus 3 whole divided by k plus 3 and the lower limit is 0, upper limit is 1. So when you put the upper limit, you will get this as 1 upon k plus 3. When you put the lower limit, you will get 0. And 0 into anything is 0. So final answer is 1 upon k plus 3. So yes, we can write 1 upon k plus 3 as integration 0 to 1, x is to power k plus 2, d of x. Now, why I am writing this? Because to convert this expression into a perfect, convert this expression into a perfect expansion. Once I create this into a perfect expansion, it will be very easy to evaluate the limit. So let's write this as limit as it is n is tending towards infinity summation k is varying from 0 to n n c k upon n raised to power k and I'm replacing 1 upon k plus 3 as integration 0 to 1 x is to power k plus 2 d of x. Now as you can see the integration is dependent on x so I can take integration outside of the limit as well as sum because the limit is dependent on n as well as the summation is dependent on k. So I'll be taking integration outside integration from 0 to 1 limit as it is n is tending towards infinity and we'll be having summation k is equal to 0 to n. Now inside value is n c k multiplied by x s to power k plus 2 whole divided by n s to power k multiplied by d of x. So I'll be integrating this. Now I'll write this as integration 0 to 1. Now I have to convert this into a perfect expansion. So limit n is tending towards infinity. We'll be having summation k is equal to 0 to n. Now we'll be writing this as n c k as it is. Now here I'll do one thing. I'll separate out x s to power k and x square here. So I'll be writing this as x s to power k upon n and whole raised to power k because x is to power k upon n is to power k is x by n whole is to power k and multiplied by x square separately and d of x. Now x is not dependent on k similarly I can take x square outside similarly I can take x square outside of the limit it won't change anything. So I'll be writing this as integration from 0 to 1 x square limit n is tending towards infinity summation k is varying from 0 to n will be having n c k multiplied by x by n whole raised to power k. Now as you can see I have converted this into a perfect expansion and d of x. As you can see this is a perfect expansion n c k x upon n whole raised to power k. Now this is a perfect expansion of I'll write here integration from 0 to 1 x square limit will remain as it is n is tending towards infinity will be having this as 1 plus x by n whole raised to power n. So if you expand this you will get the same series. So I have compressed this as I told you that's why I am writing 1 upon k plus 3 that is the catch of the question and d of x. Now I'll solve this in the next slide. The previous slide I have converted this limit into the integration that is integration from 0 to 1 x square limit n is tending towards infinity and as you can see this is a perfect expansion of the summation 1 plus x upon n whole raised to power n. Now first I'll do one thing here I'll evaluate the limit separately once I evaluate the limit separately I'll put the value here once I plug the value here I'll calculate the value of integration. So let's calculate this limit as n is tending towards infinity I can see here 
See, x is varying from 0 to 1. So it's a fraction. If limit n is standing towards infinity, the indeterminate form will be 1 raised to power infinity, clearly visible. Now let's calculate the limit. So limit will be equal to e raised to power limit n is standing towards infinity. So 1 plus x by n minus 1 multiplied by n. So our limit will be e raised to power limit n is standing towards infinity. Now you can see 1 and minus 1 will cancel out, n and n will cancel out. Our final answer will be x. So our final answer of the limit will is as n is standing towards infinity, this value will be e raised to power of x. Now, we got a nice value for the limit that is e raised to power of x. Now, we'll evaluate the integration. Now, I'm going to plug this value in the integration that is integration from 0 to 1 x square into e raised to power of x into d of x. Now, it's a bit easy to calculate this integration as compared to this sum. Now, here I'll be applying by parts, integration by parts and I'm taking this as first function and this as second function. So I'm applying integration by by parts. So first function into integration of second. Integration of e raised to power of x is e raised to power of x. The lower limit is 0, upper limit is 1. Minus integration of differentiation of first function that is 2x into integration of second that is e raised to power of x into d of x. And here the lower limit is 0, upper limit is 1. Now let's put the value here that is if you put 1 here, you will get e raised to power 1 minus when you put 0, 0 into anything is 0, so minus 0. Now let's evaluate this limit. So 2 will come outside. Again, as you can see here, I have to apply by parts. So I am taking x as first function and e raised to power of x as second function. So here I am applying by parts. So we will get this as first function into integration of second, that is e raised to power of x as it is. The lower limit is 0, upper limit is 1 minus integration of differentiation of first function. So differentiation of x is 1 and integration of e raised to power of x is e raised to power of x d of x limit from 0 to 1. Now let's evaluate this value. So e will be having e here minus twice. Now let's put the value here. When you put 1, you will get e minus 0. When you put the integration of e raised to power of x is e raised to power of x. When you put the value, you will get again you will get this as negative times of e minus 1. So final answer will be this value is e and minus e will cancel out minus of minus 1 is 1. So final answer is e minus 2 and that's a good place to stop.